Living life in the South. Southampton. 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 Cool. Right. 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 This is BBC Radio Solent. And a very good morning, this is Julian Clegg. Welcome along, thank you for choosing us. On the way, a school in the South gets involved in their very Bye, own... Bye, Mum. Bye, 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 Love you. First, though, the news at eight with Emily Hudson. Thank you, Julian. Good morning. The new chief of deputy. I've got my rugby boots. I've already put them in the thing. Take care. Ambulance emergency. Oh, Tell me exactly what's oh, happened. Hello. I need an ambulance. My son's been hit by a car. I just had a little thud and it just sounded like a ladder dropping. I didn't take any notice because I thought, no, all the kids have gone to school, I didn't hear any screeching, everything's fine. And then Felix's friend started wandering back down the driveway again, not wandering, just running. Running, <laughs> sheet white. Then Vanessa came running out, I said, call an ambulance, and then she you know, obviously started screaming. Um, and they said, yeah, an ambulance was on its way. Uh, we received a call from the land crew who realised immediately that the child on scene was unconscious, so the helicopter was dispatched immediately. The air ambulance is called out on average two or three times a day, seven days a week. It's usually airborne within four minutes. It can fly at 140 miles an hour and from our Thruxton Air Base we can reach most locations in Hampshire in 15 minutes and the Isle of Wight within 20. In trauma, what happens to you in the golden hour has a direct bearing to both immediate survival or chances of immediate survival and it also impacts upon disability in the medium to, to longer term. Um, principally because secondary injury, and we're talking about to the brain or, for example, in the context of major hemorrhage, um, can be alleviated only by delivering care as quickly as possible to the victim. We were just trying to comfort him and we were with him the whole time. And um, you know, obviously the ambulance arrived in about six minutes and then we're left outside the ambulance while they're obviously trying to, to, to um, settle Felix. The two key aspects of what we do are to get the team to the patient as quickly as possible, taking the hospital to the patient, and then to get the patient to the hospital, again, as quickly as possible, because minutes count in that first hour. The road crew in Felix's case recognised that he had a serious head injury and that he had to get to Southampton, which is the major trauma centre. They also recognised because they're out in Swanmore, that could really only be done quickly enough by helicopter. So they called us in. When we saw Felix, it was obvious straight away he suffered a severe head injury as well as his other injuries to his leg and his arm. But it's a head injury that was going to be the important injury that we had to deal with. The way we manage these patients is to put them into what we call an artificial coma. So we had to induce an anaesthetic. What that does is really improve your chances of survival by starting that hospital level critical care right by the roadside. And that's something really can only be done with an air ambulance team, well trained in the right equipment, with the right equipment and the right aircraft getting there within minutes of the call. The most significant injuries that, that Felix suffered were one, a trauma to his head. So he had a skull fracture and associated bruising to both sides of the brain with uh, a certain amount of brain swelling as a consequence. Um, and that was the most life-threatening component of his injury that followed his, his road traffic accident. In addition to which, he had several bony injuries, predominantly to the left-hand side of his body, so to both the upper and lower leg, and perhaps to his left elbow. It really wasn't until probably about a week in we were taken into a small room and told the worst case scenario that he may never wake up, he may be in a permanent vegetative state, maybe seriously, you know, um, life limiting injuries. And then, good. Release. Big step. Good boy. And squeeze. Release. He's worked so hard to recover. Um, he's obviously had the benefit of fabulous therapists around him, but he's put the effort in and he's put the graft in. And he has, in fairness, recovered beyond our expectations. You look round to, why has this happened to you? But there's no rhyme or reason for it. Things just happen at random. You know, and you can, 
put in place as many fail-safe procedures to cross the road or to do, you know, drive the car or whatever it is you're going to let your children do, but there's nothing you can Just do. Just the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time. time. All I know is that three and a half weeks later, when I actually came out of my coma, um, I uh, realised that the air ambulance had, uh, had helped save my life. Um, I'd really like to thank the Hampshire Isle of Wight Air Ambulance. Um, that short distance of water from the Isle of Wight to the mainland uh, makes a big difference when you've got an air ambulance on hand. Um, they certainly saved my career. He shattered my collarbone, broke a number of ribs, um, and had what's called a tension pneumothorax. I suppose I just want to say thank you to the Air Ambulance for um, getting me to the hospital um, as quickly as possible. I hit my head very hard and uh, was losing an awful lot of blood. And of course it was complicated by the fact that because of my stroke I was on warfarin, which means you bleed much more easily. They saved his life, I'm absolutely convinced. The um, Air Ambulance bringing two doctors to me, it just made all, all the difference between a disaster and a, a happy out, outcome. Excited that I could go down the hill on my scooter, but then halfway down the hill, I think, oh, I can't stop now. I started freaking out, and then I didn't feel anything. And I really hope lots of people support them so that they can save lots and lots of people's lives, like mine. I'd broken my neck. Um, I'd bro broken my back, I had broken pretty much all of my ribs, um, plus my left sp scapula. Um, I'd had a bleed to the brain. Um, what they did on the roadside, uh, no, I have no doubt, saved my life. And, um, you know, it's only for them that, you know, I'm here today. The air ambulance took over straight away. There was a doctor there. Barbara was critical in my eyes and they worked on her for an hour beside the road. If you get that level of medical care, it can be life-saving or life-changing from really disability injuries to getting back to full health. They say it's my job, but to us, to anyone that's uh, had to use them, it's much more than that because to Ethan, it's his mum. It's, it's having a parent for the rest of his life. And, and for me, it's, it's being able to watch my son grow up. To deliver advanced medical care by the roadside, we have to have advanced medical equipment with us. And so we carry on board the aircraft here, a whole range of kit that you won't find on a roadside ambulance. So for instance, we carry uh, anaesthetic ventilators so we can deliver the anaesthetic to stop the brain swelling. We carry blood so we can transfuse patients and get that life-saving transfusion in in the early minutes when it's of most value. We have an ultrasound where we can look at the heart and look at the lungs and make sure they're functioning well. We also carry devices for doing artificial chest compressions for resuscitation. So these pieces of equipment allow us to deliver that advanced care, but within the first few minutes. And that buys you time and that increases your survival rate dramatically. The Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance is a charity, so we need you to help us protect the future of your air ambulance. You can join our weekly lottery, you can become a corporate supporter, take on a challenge or join our direct giving campaign. Just five pounds a month will make a difference to people's lives. The Air Ambulance is now on standby from 7am right through until 2am, ready to respond to emergency call outs. And by using the, the new specialist aircraft equipment, together with night vision goggles, we can now land safely at the scene of an accident. This is a fantastic increase in the Air Ambulance capabilities, particularly during the winter months when we can now respond to early evening rush hour incidents during the hours of darkness which previously we could not, and this can make a huge difference to the patient outcome. The Air Ambulance relies heavily not just on financial donations, but donations of time. A fleet of volunteers works behind the scenes. Our volunteers are the backbone of our charity. They give talks, manage our collections, help us to run events, give presentations and much more. We rely upon them to help us keep the Air Ambulance flying. Felix has come such a long way since his injury and it's fantastic to see what he's achieved with his hard work and the support of his parents. We're very lucky because we rarely get to see the end result of the work that we do by the roadside. I'd like to thank the Air Ambulance for saving Felix's life. Because we couldn't have done it without you.